Hello, this is Mark Kavor. Today I'm going to show how to download data from Google Finance in case we want to use the closing stock price data for any particular purpose like forecasting, for example. I usually have my students look for stock that begins with their first or last name. Since my initials are MG, I'm going to pick GM, General Motors. So if I type into Google Finance, GM, and I go to General Motors, it gives me the typical Google Finance kind of charts. And here I want to go to historical prices. Underneath summary news, options, etc., historical prices. And it gives me 251 data points. But I can pick the dates that I want to start with. And usually I like to predict the previous month, the previous full month. So let's say October 1. Oh, that's a, that's a date I want to end with, actually. I want to predict October 1. So I want to go back and I want to go to October 30th, which is the last business day of the month. And then I want to go six months earlier. Uh, so that would be, what, September, August, July, June, May, April. So I want to go back to April 1 data. No fooling. And I say update. So now, it's, as you see, it gives me October 30th, and it gives me the open, high, low, close, and volume. And mostly, we're just going to go with the closing stock price. But I have to take it all. So I've got all this data here. And it's uh, available now. What do I do with it? I want to download the data. So it says, download to spreadsheet. And it opens it as a CSV file. So if I open up this file, I click on it, it gives me Google or Excel, and let me make it smaller so that we can see the entire thing on the screen. And you see, I have all the data. Let's make it bigger. And there's all my data. It's going from most recent to the oldest. So what do I usually do? I don't need anything except the closing data. So I can, I think I'll just delete these columns. And I don't need the volume either, so I will delete that column. I will left or right justify the titles. I think I'll make it bold. I think I will freeze the screen. I go to view and I say freeze the top row. So this way, if I scroll, the top row stays the same. And what do I usually do? I also highlight the top so that it looks kind of nice. Now I prefer the data to go from oldest date. I like it to go ascending. So what I'll do is I'll highlight these two columns and I'll go to data and I'll add a filter. And you see it puts these little arrows here. If I click on a filter and let's say I want it to go instead of, I want it to go ascending instead of descending, it automatically changes the dates. And it changes the closing stock price at the same time. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm done doing that, so I'll take the filter off so I don't inadvertently close it a different way. Now I'll also take my column, and you see that I have two decimal places and one decimal place. And for those of you that are in my classes, you know that offends me. So I'll go back to home and I will change this to a number format and it gives two decimal places for all. 
I don't have to worry about the date, even if I want to use it as an x-axis. Excel will treat this as a Julian date, so it will come out as a number. So I don't have to worry about that. It's actually a calculable thing. Like, for example, here, if I say equals, and I go over and say April 14th minus April 2nd, it will say that's 12 days. So it's a calculable numerical field, and I'll leave it in a date format because I can recognize it that way. If I change it to Julian format, uh, I wouldn't like it at all. I wouldn't be able to uh, I wouldn't be able to recognize it. So this is a calculable thing. So I've done a good job. Now, if I'm trying to predict the last full month, which was October, I don't want to use it in my calculations. That's what I'm using to predict. So I might go down here and take my October data and just delete it. Actually, cut it and paste it over here because I do want the data. It's very important. I'm going to do it up here and I'm going to say, there's my October data. So I'll say October. Spell would be good. 2015. And I will say um, this is closing price. Maybe I can even make it actual actual closing. How about that? And maybe instead of a date format, I'll space October 2015 so it doesn't automatically change it to a date format. If I want to, I can make it bigger. So now, if I do any calculations here, I can actually put the forecast in here, and then 